Hi, I'm Curtis Cooper. I'm a clinician researcher with the University of Ottawa. Um, I, my research and my clinical practice is focused in HIV and hepatitis C. Uh, I am also a member of the CTN co-infections and concurrent uh, working group. I'm Mark Hall. I'm a clinician researcher at the University of British Columbia and the BC Centre for Excellence in HIV AIDS. We felt the guidelines would be important at this time. It's been over 10 years since it was last a co-infection document. And so the panel looked at a variety of uh, approaches, both from reviewing the Canadian epidemiology to looking at HIV management for co-infected patients, uh, what antiretrovirals to choose, when to start, uh, and then importantly, how to manage their hepatitis C for baseline assessments to recognizing that hepatitis C treatments are changing with new hepatitis C specific agents, which needed some recommendations. Um, this is a, a document for clinicians, but it, it goes beyond that. I, I think that it would be of value for epidemiologists, social scientists, basic scientists, certainly people living with HIV or hepatitis C. What we've we, what well, I hope we've accomplished with these guidelines have made clear statements with the current hepatitis C treatments that they need to be equally available whether you have HIV or not. I think we're hoping this guideline will be not only a resource for treating clinicians but also for service organizations and potentially for uh, governments to help look at how they allocate resources for hepatitis C and HIV management. Uh, as Curtis was saying, this really is a multidisciplinary approach and needs a lot of resources to help manage people all the way through their treatment uh, process. And our guideline at least has raised some of these questions or raised some of these issues for people to consider. It is a moving target given the very rapid progress with new treatments. Um, but we think we've uh, struck a nice balance between what is current and relevant right now with standard of care therapy and also touching on the exciting new therapies to come in the future. I think one of the other strengths of the document is that we spent a bit of time grading the evidence behind our recommendations. So we feel quite comfortable that this document really is, uh, reflects the current evidence as much as it is in the literature for screening, for treatment, for drug interactions. So we feel from that point of view, it really will help clinicians uh, move forward with their management. And I think as treating providers, you feel very strongly when you see your patients uh, and you want to make sure they have the best available treatment. And I think this is really why we've taken this on, is to make sure we're a strong voice advocating for people.